What is going on, good people of YouTube? It is me, Chavez. I am back with another live stream for you all for today, Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. As always, I hope, I hope this content finds you doing well and in good spirits as I lower the volume on that background music before I go 15 minutes in before realizing that it's still playing. It should be at a reasonable volume now. Welcome to another Player Pro Talk live here on the channel. If it's your first time here, I say welcome. Hit that like button on your way in. If you're a repeat offender, I say welcome back. I hope this morning is treating you well. Hope things are going well. Another day, another dollar, another day, another... I don't even know what other sayings out uh, are there out there another day another dollar another day another hopefully not problem another day another problem that'd be a shitty motto that'd be a shitty motto another day another win maybe something like that probably better whatever it is we got another day ahead of us i'm ready to get this going yesterday was okay nothing too crazy coming off some pretty big winning days over the last five days a uh, day like yesterday uh was okay the funny thing is um as you accumulate more wins and as you accumulate bigger wins days like yesterday uh maybe in the past would have seemed like good days but in comparison they're okay and that just shows the growth as you continue to win and win bigger and make more profit you raise the scale a little bit. So yesterday was okay. Not not a great day, not a bad day, just okay day. So looking to bounce back and make it a great day today. Oh man, let's get going. I know, I know for a fact you guys got some turds to talk about today. So uh, we're gonna get into that in a second. But as always, per our usual formats, We'll kick things off with the most morbid intro in YouTube live history. Over 10% of the U.S. population dies every single day. They die in their sleep, I should say, every single night. Hashtag blessed. So if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, you are not one of the 10%. You made it. Hashtag blessed. I used to overlook stuff like this. Like, oh, who cares? Whatever. Another day. Monday suck. Oh, fuck Mondays. And stuff like that is just stupid shit every day is a great day uh every day is a great day not every day is the best day not every day is the perfect day but every day is a great day make something happen if you don't like the day change it change your fucking attitude change your mindset change your outlook on something make it a better day you got full control over that shit but hashtag bless nonetheless hashtag bless before i go off on a rant before I go off on a tangent here, let's get into some turds for today. You're looking at yesterday's slips, any player prop team organization, uh, ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, whatever, any turd you want to throw out there, throw them in a the chat. Let's uh, let's get it off our chest together. Let's, let's talk some shit about some shit today. What's going on, Ruben? Good morning to you, JR. What's up, brother? divine what's going on man good morning to you sir gonna need you uh 4kd assist d book points tray man uh capella first uh what am i reading here tray man ra capella first quarter rebounds uh jimmy butler points we'll do a few of those we'll do a few of those for sure what's going on siever good morning to you yeah, PJ Washington, Siakam. Yeah, I thought I thought PJ Washington would be the poster boy for today's turds. Turd talk. Turd talk. Maybe I should rename the segment the turd talk. I have a nice little image of me sitting in a three-piece suit in the chair, sitting across from a, a turd, drinking a cup of coffee. Turd talk. Yeah, turd of the day. Anybody who played a Celtic Bucks game, boy, that's a good one too. That is um that's probably an overlooked one because of the terrible game that PJ Washington had, the uh, the lackluster game that Siakam had, 16 points for Siakam. 
Uh, I would almost rather CJ, excuse me, I would almost rather PJ have not scored any damn points because I think he ended with one point. One point. Seven rebounds, three assists, and three fouls. He had more personal fouls than he had points. He was 0 for 7 from the field. He was 1 for 2 from the line. So literally, the dude couldn't hit a shot. He couldn't hit a shot from free throw. He couldn't hit a shot from three. He couldn't hit a shot from mid-range. He couldn't do... I think he even missed the layup. I saw in the box score. I was like, you missed the layup? The gaffer got the offensive rebound. Yeah, PJ Washington. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Divine. <laughs> oh, man. That's good. You talk all that shit. Oh, I'm going to beat it up. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you need a warm up. You need a you need a practice run before you get in there. That's funny. Yeah, PJ Washington. Um, I was on him early, early in the morning. I had him, you know, I almost made him my write up of the day, but I'm glad I didn't. Went with Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller. Worked out for us yesterday. Took the over 18 and a half points. If you're in the freemium discord or premium discord, whichever one you're in, you saw me write up Brandon Miller yesterday for 18 and a half points. He goes for 21. I think he went for 21. Yep. He went for 21. 21 points for Brandon Miller. That is now nine out of the last 11 days with a win in our write-up. So those write-ups are awesome. Uh, I do all the research for you. But... On a day like yesterday, where you get the tacos, you can just pair up that write up with a taco. You could have played that write up, Brandon Miller play with all the tacos and cash. Put $25 on that two pick. 75 plus 75 plus 75 is 225. Bet 75 went 225 if you would have played the write up. So I did play my write up. The only problem was I played them with PJ Washington. So PJ Washington chalked my slip. But the write-up still hit. So hopefully you tell that one. Yeah. PJ Washington. Who else? Um, yeah. Big Icy. What's up, man? Good morning. One, one damn point. That's all we got. One goddamn point. Yeah, one goddamn point. PJ Ashington. I like that. I like that. Uh, Washington. Siakam. Celtics. Celtics finally gave up. Listen, we've been talking about this for weeks days we've been talking about this for days the celtics have nothing left to play for they're simply running their starters out there to keep them fresh in terms of just like not getting too cold and sitting on the bench like in, in, in the nfl when you get a bye week you've been sitting for like two weeks you go into that second round of the playoffs and it takes you like a quarter to like get warmed up so to think the celtics are just trying to make sure nobody gets too cold they're trying to keep them in the flow of the game without risking injury literally nothing left to play for we talked about this yesterday on the stream they don't give two shits about beating the milwaukee bucks right now they got everything clinched up they'll see them in the playoffs if milwaukee's lucky they'll see them in the playoffs so we saw it we saw it porzingis gets scratched horford gets scratched the whole damn team pretty much got scratched because they didn't play like uh they didn't play like much there's a joke there to be made with the word scratch i can't think of it right now but yeah that's that was a turd the whole fucking game was a turd so if you played anybody from that game i'm sorry um it just was a terrible game honestly for the celtics much needed win for the bucks though they played um uh, we'll talk about um a few buck players today possible value opening up with injury news in milwaukee so we'll talk about that let's get on to some injury news speaking of injury report for today March, March, April 10th, Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. Very small list in comparison to the past couple of days. We got Mitchell. Oh, is Mitchell going to play today? That's nice. That's nice. That's great. He's been scratched late minute, scratch last couple of games. Kind of shitty. He's in. Great. I'm glad you showed up. Thank you because I'm playing you today. I got you in my slips. Probable Cam Johnson, Nick Claxton, Jacob Gilliard, San Merrill's doubtful. And then DFS is out. So you can see right there at the bottom of that screen, um, Giannis going, uh, undergoing MRI on his calf. 
I don't think he plays today. I don't think it's likely he plays today. In the event he gets scratched, value will be on the board, but by then it'll be too late because the lines will have been bumped. So if you see anybody on the Bucks right now that you like, those lines have yet to reflect him not playing today. So if you want to get a head start on that news, go after it. Get after it. Get after it. All right. We go from death to turds to injuries. Can we talk about something positive? Yeah, let's talk about something positive. I talked about this yesterday on the live stream. I'm going to talk about it again today. I got two offers for everybody who's watching this. Uh, members of the Discord, this applies to specifically you. So special offer from Props.Cash on the annual plan being not chopped in half, but definitely being marked down from 199 to 149 for an entire year. So that averages out to $12.49 per month. If you're currently using Props.Cash for your researching purposes, you're paying more than $12 a month. I tell you that right now. Okay, so cancel that and then you'll sign up for this and knock it out for the year and you save some money. Saving $89 when you do all that math. And this is exclusive to Discord members only. Doesn't matter if you're in freemium or premium, you can take advantage of this offer. So if this is something that you have interest in, I posted this in the Discord, just shoot me a DM and let me know. I'll put your name on the list because this is only offered to my Discord. This is not on Twitter. This is not even on their website. I don't even have social media. I don't even have an Instagram. It's only for my Discord members. So hit me up in the Discord. Let me know. I'll put your name on the list and I'll let props.cash know and then they'll hook you up. Second offer, talked about this yesterday. So if you're not ready to join premium Discord, pay a month, pay a year, you can try it out for 10 days, 9.99, 10 day pass, limited offer here. Not gonna run this uh, for a long, long time, but definitely wanna offer this for those who are thinking about it, maybe just wanna see what it's about, but doesn't want to uh, move forward with a month. I got you covered here. So again, shoot me a DM, let me know. What's up? If you wanna try this out, 10 day pass promise you you'll make your ten dollars back pretty fast and we move on to some plays for today wednesday april 10th 2024 got the date right this time talking nba plays mlb plays whatever you want to talk about price picks underdog jock market sleeper dabble uh hot streak wherever you play we can look up the player prop using props.cash speaking of props.cash that's what we use here on the channel for all our researching purposes that is my promo code so if you don't want to do the, do the full year which i think is a great deal you want to sign up for a month get 25 percent off your first month over on props.cash that is my promo code thanks 25 although if you sign up for the year uh you're saving more than 25 percent off that first month so if you're looking for the best deal it is an annual plan. If you've never seen props.cash before, stick around. I use it here in real time every single live stream. So it's a great, great walkthrough, great tutorial. Um, you'll learn how to use it just by watching this live stream. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let us move on over to the prize picks dashboard. I was thinking about this earlier today because I do play on other pick em sites, but we always start on prize picks dashboard. In fact, that's the only dashboard we pull up. And I was thinking, you know, why is that? And, um, and just using the, the, the prize picks platform, it, it's easier to use and navigate. It's, uh, it's cleaner. And for presentation purposes, it's easier for me to put on a screen. It's very easy to read and follow and understand the dashboard. There are a lot of dashboards out there for pick'em sites that need improvement, uh, that aren't as smooth and clean. So for presenta presentation purposes, really only, Price Picks does offer the most, the most upside for me. But from here, wherever you play, we can talk about it on props.cash. So, just because it's not on price picks doesn't mean we can't talk about it. Gotta let me know in the chat though where you're playing so I don't try to look for it on price picks and it not be there. So I tell you what, I have a couple of plays that I want to start with today. I don't have a slide for them. That's okay. I'm gonna take a look at Donovan Mitchell's points. 
I also want to take a look at Chet Holmgren's points that have been bumped from 14 and a half to 15. I don't care. I still think they're in a spot. And then from there, I also want to take a look at Damian Lillard. I said we talk about a couple bucks. Trying to get ahead of this possible injury news for, well, this possible uh, scratch for Giannis. So I guarantee you, if he gets scratched, Damian Lillard's numbers will get bumped by three to four, maybe even five points rebounds whatever so those are three plays that i am personally playing i have put these on my cheat sheet in the discord i want to break these down on props.cash but we will also get to your questions so throw them in a the chat if you've been here before you know how we roll if you're new to the channel throw a question in the chat let me know and we'll get to it asap <laughs> What's going on, Darrell? Good morning. Seaver says he got a text from Prize Picks. Think if you get a, he sells if you get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ruben had a good day. We'll get into the Discord in uh, in a few minutes too. Show you what we did in the Discord yesterday. So it uh, wasn't the uh, like the biggest winning day, but there's always profit. We always make profit in the Discord. The providers are always on top of their shit. We have some good. Um, Damien had a fantastic day. I don't know if Damien's on the stream. Damien had a fantastic day. Ruben had a great day too. All right. What did I miss from uh, Wave Lord? Uh, Najri got it. That's what happened to him. Yeah. Okay. I saw he had eight minutes and uh, then that was it. I thought he got hurt. He got ejected after his towel made an appearance on wrestling. <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, Knuckles. It was, um, it was one of those days, you know? You can't go up unless you come back down. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's how it works. It's getting to that point. It's getting to that point. Uh, just got to be much more selective with these little few games that we have left in the NBA season and targeting teams that have something to play for, or even players that have something to play for. Are they working for a two, are they working for a, a, a contract extension? Are they a two way player looking to get into the NBA? Shit like that. Knuckles says he's making late slips today. Yeah, the, the value was very, very scarce today. To be honest with you, I was able to find some value, but not like yesterday or the day before. Definitely. I got you, Divine. I saw him. I saw him. What's up, Damien? What's up? Yeah, Damien had a nice day yesterday. Uh, Max Reed had his Fandle shirt under his jersey. I see. <laughs> oh, Nas Reed. <laughs> um... Jalen says, thanks for the stream yesterday, guys. Hit five of six, man. You hit five out of your six-man slips. So you played six six-man slips and won five? Five as in cash, 25X on five of them? What? Nice, man. Congrats. Congrats. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's, um, we looking for a bounce back game from the Suns today? What was the final score yesterday? That game was ridiculous. Uh, that game was ridiculous. There's a lot of ridiculousness. They only lost by 13. They were down by 30, right? They only lost by 13. Dude. The Trailblazers only losing by 10. They were up by 10 at one point. That's ridiculous. Uh, the Timberwolves having to come back to beat the Wizards at home is ridiculous. What else? There were just a lot of lopsided games. Pacers beat the brakes off the Raptors. 76ers handled business. Dallas, that game, even, even though Hornets made a little bit of a comeback, that game was never in doubt. Celtics, Bucks, that game sucked. Um, yeah, there are just a lot of games that were lopsided yesterday. So hopefully the, the hopefully the NBA product today is much better. All right, let's add in. Um, let's go Trayman, RA, and we'll go uh, Devin Booker's points. 
We'll look at those for divine. Twenty-seven. It gives us five. All right. Let's stick in the same game. Let's take a look at Bradley Beal's threes for Knuckles. All right, we got six. This first round of player props, if you're new to the channel, hit that like button, first of all. Second of all, listen closely. Um, we go through different rounds of player props, so I take player props from the chat. I throw them on the board. We use props.cash to break them down. The purpose of this is to give you insight as to why these plays are good plays or not good plays. From there, you make your own mind up. Do what you want with the information. Um, but hopefully by the end of this stream, you have come across a couple of different plays that you can add to your slips. Uh, hopefully this has helped you in your research process. All right. We got Mitchell over assists, Holmgren over points, Dame over PR. We got man over nine and a half rebounds and assists. And then we're going to Phoenix, LA. Take a look at the backcourt Booker and Beal. Without further delay, let's head over to props.cash. Talked about this yesterday. If you're a props.cash user, remember, don't sleep on these blogs. Very, very helpful to get you started in your research process. Major League blog has already been put out. NBA is on the way. Very helpful to get your research going. What's going on, Vu? Good morning. I just saw your uh, message there. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so let's quickly take a look at Donovan Mitchell's assist at four and a half. Now, it's great that he's playing today because he's been absent from the from these past few games. Last minute scratch. All right, so we're looking at his assist today. He's gone over this in 70% of his last 10 games. So this 10 game log is not as... Um, it's a little it's it's not as on point as we wanted because there's been some absences in that 10 game. So let's look at his last five games. Now, you can see there's a big gap here between this Houston game and Philly game. So these four games are all games that he's been back from his absence, right? So four games back, three games over. That's 15, 21, that's seven assists in those three games. But if you want to factor all this in, he's at five. And that's exactly what he needs today. So even with those two bad games, he's getting you the over on his prop today. He is projected for 5.46. So you want to round it down to five. That's all you need today. Now, I do want to show you his potential assist because in those three games where he has gone over assist prop, he's um, he's getting you nine or more potential assists. And you add up that, those potential assists. That's 33 potential assists. He's basically giving you 11 potential assists and seven assists. It's a pretty good ratio there. When he's not going over his assist prop, his potential assists are low. I don't think he'll have a problem today with his assist or potential assist. This matchup is a favorable one for him. I really think they need to get him going. I mean, I really think as we see this season wind down and we get closer to playoffs. They really got to get him going, man, because he has looked just hit or miss. You know, they really got to get him going, whatever it takes. I would just this game is like a dress rehearsal. They should just beat the living dog shit out of the Grizzlies today. But Mitchell should be trying new moves and tricks and shit out. He should be like. Harlem Globetrotters out there just working on shit. This is the game for him to get back on track. So I like his four and a half assists today. That's playable on uh, Price Picks and Sleeper. I believe Hot Streak has it as well. All right. Let's talk about this Charlotte Atlanta game. Let's take a look at Trey Mann. 
We're going to take a look at his RA, which is rebounds and assist. If you ever have any questions over like what these abbreviations mean, these initials mean, ask. So RA is rebounds and assist right there. Back-to-back -back games of 11 plus against some pretty damn good teams. Oklahoma and Dallas hooked it here. Head-to-head -head matchup against the Hawks. Both of these, both of them, both of them games are as a Hornet. So we like, we like that. These two games, he was in Charlotte for both of these games. Great, great games versus the Hawks. Hawks, again, these two teams on paper, basically the same team. Seriously, especially without Trey Young, the talent level gets psh, dropped down a little bit on the Atlanta side. You got some talented dudes on Charlotte. They're just not a good team. Basically, this is like the same team. They're just playing each other. Same team. So looking at his RA today, he's projected for nine. He's projected for the hook. Don't let that deter you. Let's take a look at his odds. Over on points bet, over bet MGM, over Caesars, over DraftKings, over FanDuel. So all five books like the over convincingly. Like the over here, the matchup is good. Positive game logs and positive game logs versus Atlanta. There's a lot to like there. All right. Moving on. <clears throat> Let's talk about Damian Lillard over his PR. Now, I chose his PR because it's the lowest of all his props. You could also look to his RA if you want. So let me show you what his PR looks like. And then we'll take Giannis out of the mix. And then you can see what it looks like. So three games versus Orlando. Number one. So these two games, he was in uh, Portland. This is this season. Okay. Last 10 games. PR. It is what it is. Okay. 40% hit rate. 20% hit rate in his last five. Let's go ahead and take Giannis out. No! Oh, oh, what happened? Oh, my God. You removed one of the best players in the NBA from your team. And, oh, my God, other players have to do shit? Look at that. So, now, all these games are not as a Milwaukee Buck. So, from this Toronto game on. So, six games as a Buck, he's gone over in five. Like, convincingly gone over. You want to take a look at just games as a Milwaukee Buck? There you go. Four out of five games as a Buck. Last five games played without Giannis. Not even, not even a sweat. Okay. So the upside is there. This is a home game for the Bucks. They need to win this game. Orlando's a good team. They're grimy. They're slow. They they make things very difficult. But to, to me, this play is about just opportunity and usage. So that's really it. I mean, we know what Dame can do without Giannis. We've talked about it here before on a stream. I mean, this, this is the kind of matchup that you want to select a player like him because he, he needs to step up and he probably will, more than likely will. So doesn't hurt that we're at home. It hurts when I don't select the right one. So um, very small sample size of games played at home without Giannis. We only have three to look at, but he's gone over in all three. These two as a Portland Trailblazer. Pretty good numbers, okay? Now, I don't believe the odds currently reflect uh, Giannis being possibly ruled out. You got minus 110 on BetMGM, 119, 110 you can see how close these lines are at 32 and a half and 31 and a half. Why? They're, um, these are the same damn lines for a different line, for a different prop. This looks good to me. I'm willing to roll the dice on this one. And even if Giannis does play, I'm sorry. He's not 100%. You don't get a fucking MRI done on your calf if you're 100%. So he's either limited today or he's out today. Either one, I'll take the over on Dame. Let's take a look at Chet Holmgren. Full game points. Now, this one got bumped from 14 and a half to 15. I, I will still play it at 15. So let's see if it's listed at 15 anywhere. No. 
Now look at the numbers coming in at 15 and a half. You have minus 113 to each side on FanDuel, minus 115 to each side on points bet. But at 14 and a half, this thing was getting slammed on the over. If you are ever curious as to when a play is going to get bumped up, you need to pay attention to the books. They're going to tell you everything. A play gets bumped up because there's too much juice to one side or a play gets bumped because there's too much juice to one side. So these pick them sides have to make it even. They have to get it closer to 50 50. When you see a play that's minus 150, 160, 140, that's 54, 55, 56 percent chance to hit. They need to bring it back down to 50 50. That's all they're trying to do. And that's what they did with this one. But you can see the odds at 15 and a half are not terrible. And we're getting it at 15. So let's talk about it at 15. Last five games, he's gone over in two, pushed in one, under in two. Scratch that. Let me re- let me let me do that again without the toggle on. All right. Last five games. Over and two, push two, under and one. Numbers against the Spurs. All right. Two games gone over. One game gone under. Big difference from beginning of the year. Keep in mind, this is his first full season as an NBA, as an NBA player. So he's a rookie in terms of experience some of his first few nba games you know like at the beginning of the year that's a huge difference from now february march big big difference last 10 games getting you 15 or more points four over two pushes four unders it's there it's there at 15 he needs 16 yes yes at 14 and a half this is still playable on sleeper at 14 and a half at 14 and a half he needs 15 so he needs 15 either way 15 gets you the over or push 16 gets you the over clear gets you the over so it's a good spot it's a good spot right now the thunder are the third seed behind the Nuggets and the Wolves. They're only one game, they're only one game out of the top seed from what I'm seeing. So I think this game is important to them. I don't think they want to drop a game to the to the Spurs. I think we see them show up and handle business. So I do like I still like the over on Chet. Let's talk about the backcourt in Phoenix real quick. Let's talk about Devin Booker over total points at 27 and a half. Correct? 27 and a half? Yep. So 27 and a half. You're getting minus 140 odds on BetMGM. So we don't like that line at all. But let's see if we can find it elsewhere. Divine does not play on price picks. So uh Devon you you play on books right and do you play an underdog also so 26 and a half is is uh 26 and a half is the line on underdog so when we take a look at that, those odds FanDuel likes the over DraftKings likes the over Caesars and points bet is evenly split now you are getting some juice to the under on DraftKings and Caesars but that is a big difference between minus 140 to the under and minus 104 So let's look at it at 26 and a half. He's gone over this in two of his last five games, five of his last 10 numbers against the Clippers. Yesterday was a brutal game bloodbath. So he had his nice, uh, he had his nice uh, five game streak where he got you 30 or more. He was on one and he's cooled off a little bit. Let's expand this out. to 15 games so when he's um man he he just works in uh in blocks like if he's if he's not you we're not seeing a lot of separation here like he's not bouncing back four games straight of unders and he gets worse then he comes up then he gets back down so Man, um, if you think like, hey, look, this little three game block of games, 
is done and now here comes a new win streak because this is how it's this is how it's looking if you're paying attention to the game trends this is what it's looking like to me three game block two game block five game block four game block three game block i mean so again you feel like hey this little little slump he's in he's out then this is the prime this is a prime game to attack especially coming off an ass whooping like that last night playing the same team that just whooped your ass like you get the re you get to rematch them Suns need to win this game Suns are currently sixth in the in the west behind the Mavs two games behind the Mavs four games behind the Clippers This is a meaningful game. If we can get some, if we can get some damn fight out of the Suns today, this might be a good a good spot to attack Devin Booker. He's just too good of a player. We know he's too good of a player for this. 13 and 12. Come on. He's projected for 28.9. Okay, so you're getting great projections. You're getting good, good to okay good average to good odds because minus 110 is not the best juice when you know this is not like decisively over but it's better than minus 140 and then you're getting some positive game logs versus the clippers playoffs or not doesn't matter he's still playing the clippers and he's performing for the most part pretty well all right let's look at bradley beals threes 1.5 threes Now, his numbers against the Clippers, last few games, not the best. 60% of the last 10, he's gone over this. Now, this really improves the average. I think his range is in that two to three, though. You're not really going to get seven from him too often. In fact, that was a season high six four. So yeah, you're not getting that. And look how far apart those games are. So it's not going to happen very often. But what is happening? Damn, what is happening often is two or more. Last thirty games, he's fifty percent going over this line. Last fifteen games, he is fifty three percent. Last five games, sixty percent, and last ten games, sixty percent. So. Looking at his projection today, he's projected for 2.53, so that's three. You can round that up. And then the odds on this one, favorable across the board until you get the points bet. They don't know what to do with it. They're favorable towards the over, but look how close those lines are. So again, nothing convincing about this, but you are still getting positive juice to the over on that one. Who did we not look at? We didn't look at Trey Mann. We didn't look at Trey Mann. Did we? Yeah, we did. We 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 sure as hell did look at Trey Mann. Yep, we did. All right. Mitchell over, Hongren over, Dame over, Trey Mann over. Um, the only one I'm a little skeptical on, I'll be honest with you, is Devin Booker just because of the slump he's in. Again, if you feel that this is over and he starts a streak because he's working in blocks, it's not every, it's not like one game off, one game on, it's in blocks. So he is in a slump, he's in a slump for three, four, five games. If he's cooking, he's cooking for four, five, six games. So you got to ask yourself, is he cooking tonight or is this slumping? That's the only one I'm not 100% like good with. I'll take a shot on Bradley Beal's threes. I feel like those have better uh, better odds. But this is what we got so far. This is our first player block of player props. First block of player props? Yeah. First block of player props. <laughs> Struggling. Boom. 
All right. Six up, six down. Move it all around. Here come the comments. 29 viewers on the stream. Thank y'all so much for being here. Hey, hit the like button, number one. Awesome. If you're new to the stream, throw a question in the chat. Let me know that you're new and I'll make sure I answer your question ASAP. What's up, ye? PJ sold fantasy, but he's been hitting rebounds and assists. Uh, look, call me crazy, but I want to go right back to PJ Washington today. Terrible matchup against the Heat. Uh, but I talk about this going right back to a player after they sold. Doesn't always work, but it is a good opportunity. 18 and a half PRA for PJ Washington. I have my eye on that one. I haven't really done a whole lot of research on it, but as soon as he sold last night, I was like, you know what? What's what's his lines for tomorrow? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on the lookout for those. Yo, I caught D-Book at 26. Yeah, he's at 26 on on uh, on underdog. So yeah, price picks is definitely inflating that line a little bit. Play D-Book on play D-Book on underdog or anywhere else you can find it at 26 and a half. 27 is much higher. If you're going to go that route for the over. All right. Damn, I missed a lot. Chat is on point today. Damn, Jalen. So Jalen played six six-man slips and profited five out of six. So that's... Damn. Did you just uh, play a core group of players and just kind of mix and match a couple of different guys? Talking about that Clippers Suns game. Booker assist over Durant PR over. Let's um all right, got the screenshots in there, right? What is uh, Devin Booker's assist at seven and a half? You like the over on that one? Now, do you think it's a over points game for him or do you think it's over assist game or do you think he does both? Because we talked about this on the stream before. When Book goes off, when he's scoring, he ain't doing much passing. Uh, if he's struggling from the field or he's trying to get, you know, I don't know, he's just taking the back seat, you see these assists go up. So, it just kind of depends on what you think the kind of game he has today. We can also take a look at uh, the amount of games he's gone over both, you know, gone over point prop and assist today. Durant over what? Durant over who? PR? Thirty-three and a half. Divine says, "So you like his assist over points for Donovan?" Yeah, I mean his assist. We were we were playing his assist at five and a half at one point. We're getting it at four and a half because I don't even care why. We're just getting it at such a low line. His points. Um, I don't know. His points just kind of scare me sometimes. And to be honest. Uh, when I was doing my research this morning, I didn't really see a whole lot of um, of value for his points, but his assists were really standing out to me. Not that doesn't mean that is that he can't hit points, but his assists were just the ones standing out to me. Oh, that oh, he's playing against Cleveland. It's a low line for Eric, Eric Fetty. Eric, uh, Eric Fetty, Fetty Wap, Eric Fetty Wap. <laughs> trying to think of a, trying to think of like a, a crossover name for him. 
What's going on, Jeannie? Did I say hi? Good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, we'll take a uh, we'll take a good look at Kevin Durant's assist. Uh, we'll take a look at a few different plays for Kevin Durant. We're getting some requests for his for multiple player props for him. Go do your thing, Ruben. Go do your thing. Tristan uh, asks, is Edwards a play today versus Denver? Depends. Uh, well, we're in the wrong sport. Depends on what you're looking at. Suns bounce back. Very rarely do you see a team get throttled by the same team in back-to-back -back games, right? Even in baseball. Like, very rarely do you see, like, clean three, four-game sweeps, you know? So... You expect that team to win one game. You expect that team to bounce back at some point. So, yeah, I don't think we see another 40, 50 point game today. But again, hopefully it stays close because that game is very meaningful to both teams. All right. What I miss? What I miss? I feel like I missed a lot. I feel like I'm missing a lot. Any other um, any other MLB plays? I just wanted to make sure while I got the MLB MLB dashboard pulled up. I think Fetty was the last one. Okay. All right. Uh, Jesus, what's going on? Good morning. Jesus says Shea over 1.53 is made on sleeper is payout boost. Point two three five. All right, let's switch back over to the NBA. Let's spell his name correctly. He doesn't even have a three point prop up. Let's look at his points. His points were really grading out well at 27 and a half. But we talk about that. Anytime you have the lopsided odds, the books the pick them sites need to get back it need to get it back closer to 50 50. so that's why they bumped it up to 28. but if you like it at 27 and a half 28 is not that far off because you needed 28 to, to begin with yes you need 29 now but uh but you need 29 now you see what i'm saying it's not that big of a jump This one might be interesting too. Dame and uh, Shea. Let's take Shea off the board. Actually, no, let's leave him on the board. Gafford under PR. Are we looking for a uh, we're looking for a bounce back from PJ and then a. A back bounce, a back bounce for Gafford. PR. Look, Gafford had a great game yesterday. I think that was a lot to do with PJ Washington being so absent. I just took advantage of it. How many, how many of those missed shots did he grab a rebound off of? How many missed shots from PJ Washington? Ended up in Daniel Gaffer's hands. <laughs> he probably got like two offensive boards just from Washington's bullshit shooting night alone. And then had like four points off those boards probably. All right. We got a full board here. Uh, I say, you know what? I want to make room for one more. I want to make room for one more. Oh, Trey Young is back tonight. Even if Trey Young is not playing full run, that does definitely cut into DeJounte's, uh, it cuts into his production for sure. Ooh, we got a lot of plays. Almighty, what's going on? Is the claw still out? He's not on the injury report today. Uh, Trey Young could play Wednesday versus Hornets. 
He hasn't played since February. He's playing like 25 minutes tonight. Tristan says blowout potential since Wimby is questionable. Um. Yeah, but it is one of those situations where if they are blowing the Spurs out, I still think that Chet can get his points. Now, can Shea get his points? Maybe that's why we want to look at the combo prop here between uh, Shea and Dame. Because if Shea gets you 26 points, um, what is that left for? Um, what is that left for for Dame? 30? I think without Giannis, Dame... It's it's possible, it's probable that he gets you more than 27, 28. That could be a sneaky one. The combo props work well because if one player doesn't perform, the other player does have the opportunity to make up for it. Unless one of these dudes just goes out there and completely falls flat, then you're screwed either way. But Jalen Brunson's not playing tonight, but his free throws over five might be a wagon. For, for future for future players got uh all right let's look up i got i got one more player prop in there let's take shay off here and let's look at we got some mlb plays coming in i have not taken a question from vu he wants to take a look at tanner baby bybee over four and a half hits allowed So we got opposing pitchers here. We got Fetty, we got Eric Fetty Wap over uh, three and a half strikeouts, and then we got Tanner, Tanner BB over hits. All right, let's do this. Enough talking. Start walking. Oh, hit that like button on your way in. If you're watching this stream for the first time, let me know in the chat. I'll make sure I get to your question ASAP. Um, let's start in the NBA. Let's knock these out. We got Booker, Durant, Gafford. Let's take a look at this Gafford play. We are looking at the under on his points and rebounds. His points and rebounds are, are prop for 17 and a half. He's projected for 18, but you are getting favorable. Bitch. You are getting favorable odds to the under on every single one of these books. Caesars is the only book that's giving you about even odds on this one. About. So let's look at what's going on here now 33 pr is not his thing that's not what gafford does it's what he can do it's not what he does though thirty three is a really high number i mean he get you 20 in a lot of games right but thirty three that's 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 an outlier so you're looking at games where he's gotten you 18 or or more, which is what he needs today. He's gotten you one, two, three, four, five out of ten. Numbers against Miami. This is a tough matchup. But he's got it done in two games versus Miami this season. Upside is there. Will the opportunity be there? All right. Will the opportunity be there? Luca went all out yesterday. I don't even, I think he does play, but I don't know how much. Yeah, can he duplicate that effort yesterday? Can he do it again today? Will other guys have to step up? Which is kind of why I like the over on PJ Washington, because he is more of a scoring threat. He can do it from, from all range. So you're getting good odds for the under on Gafford, but his game logs are giving you something to think about because 50 50 is. That's a fighter's chance. 60% in his last five games. And pretty positive numbers against Miami. 
you think he has his hands full with Bam today, then maybe even get some foul trouble. Has Bam been active for these games? No. So, uh, with Bam out of the lineup and two games played against Miami, these are two games played without Bam in the lineup. But these two Bam were in, so he's done it. There's more to think about there than I thought. I thought there'd be like, like oh, it's clear cut. We're going under on that one. There's there's a little bit more to think about there, but we do have enough data to go under based off odds. All right, let's, um, where are we going? We're going back to Phoenix. Somebody asked about Anthony Edwards, uh, but they didn't give me a player prop. Durant, Durant over PR. So, look, up until this game against the Clippers, hold on. There you go. Uh, three straight games of unders. But numbers against the Clippers, different. Yes, playoff games, but still. Wait, are these playoff games? Yeah, I think they are. Three straight games under four out of five. Last 10, Durant has been really, really underperforming. We know he's a much better player than this. What is going on with Durant? Is he unhappy again? Who does he play for next year? Houston? On the year, he's averaging 34 points and rebounds. Over his last 10, he's averaging 30. There is there is some ground to make up here. So there is there's some upside here. He's underperforming, which look, we're gonna get a lower line on him and we're gonna be able to attack it because he's a better player than 32 PR. I don't know what's going on in, in Phoenix. I don't know why this is happening to him. If this is just personal reasons or if he's just not feeling it right now, but you have to pay attention to these games. These are some winnable matchups. These are some winnable games that he should be performing better you are getting positive projections on this one so you do have that going for you for you like the over on this one and at 32 and a half you got the over on nowhere two books so far split on points bet slightly under on Fanduel. they're not they're not giving Durant very much respect today. You want to defy the odds and take the over. You have positive game logs against the Clippers, and you also have positive projections. Devin Booker assists. So seven and a half, he's projected for eight. Gone over this in three. Excuse me. I keep pulling up the damn games against the Clippers, but. If you're interested in this five last game now over his last 10 games he's averaging seven 50 hit rate over his last five he's averaging eight in games where he's gotten you 27 or more points in his last 10 games these three and these two, New Orleans and Cleveland. Let's look at his assist. One out of three. One out of three games, he went over points and assist. And in these two games against Cleveland and New Orleans, he got you points and assists. So, yes, it is possible for him to do both today. But it's not happening a lot. 30% hit rate going over points and assists over his last 10 games. So, like I said, he's either doing one or the other or none. So, if you feel like this is a, a major bounce back for him, where he goes over points and assists, 
What's his PA? Just take his PA. So on prize picks, he needs 28 points and he needs eight assists. That's 36 total PA. You're getting this at a 34 and a half line. He needs 35. So you're getting it at a one point and assist discount if you go combo. Just plays points and assists for the discount if you think he goes over both. If not, you got to figure out which game he's going to have. Scoring or passing. Projection on his PA is 37. That's pretty good. Odds on this one, the hit. Bet MGM and DraftKings like it. Um, wait. Yeah. Bet MGM and DraftKings like this. Points bet does not. I'm attempting to look up his points and assist on um, on prize picks, and it's just it's not letting me. Is my prize picks fucked up, or is it is that everybody's prize picks? Please, please pause. Please stand by due to technical difficulties. It might just be my Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, I think it's just my desktop app because the mobile app is fine. So points and assists for Devin Booker. Yeah, they're at 34 and a half. So no discount there. Yeah, if you like his points and assists today, take the over on his points and assists combo because you're getting it at a lower line when you compare both of them separately. Yeah. There we go. All right. Let's quickly look at this Dame and Shea point prop sitting at 55 points. So we think this is a blowout in OKC with no Wimby. We've seen the Spurs play tough without Wimby. We've This is who they were last year. This team is the same team last year without Wimby. They're the same fucking team. The supporting cast, all that shit's the same. The only difference this year is they're one year older and Wimby is now here. But when Wimby sits, we know what they are because we saw it last season. They can play tough. They're playing for pop. So I don't think Wimby sitting is is a terrible thing. But yeah, the blowout is there because they're just not a good team. So SGA projected for... 26 points. That's what we said today, right? If he just gets you 26. Numbers against the Spurs. I think that he gets you 28, 29, to be honest. But let's say he gets you 26. And let's look at Dame's points. Twenty-six and twenty-two, that's forty-eight. Now Again, I don't think these projections, I don't think these odds are factoring in that Giannis may sit today. I'm willing to take a chance on his props and hopefully beat beat the bumps. So he's projected for 22 points today and last five games played without Giannis as a buck. Dame is averaging 31 points. So if Dame goes for 29 and Shea goes for 26, that's 55 on the dot. If Dame goes for 30, that's over. If if Shea goes for 27, that's an over. You see what I'm saying? Minimum 26, minimum 29 for Dame. That gets you the push. Anything more than that gets you the over. I think the combo point prop for these two guys is in play. All right, let's go over to the Major League Baseball tab. Why did I say it like that? Let's go over and check out these two MLB props. So let's first take a look at Eric Fetty Wap. We're going to take a look at the over on his strikeout sitting at three and a half. Now, back to back starts this year of four or more. Perfect. Good start. 
projected for five and a half, you can't get five and a half. So let's say he's projected for just five. Who gives a shit? If he gets you four, he's over. There is no style points. So four or more is what you're looking for. Projections favor the over. Caesars likes the over. Bet MGM, excuse me, points bet does not. DraftKings does not. Bet MGM does not. FanDuel likes it. Pinnacle. Pinnacle likes it. If Pinnacle likes it, that's a good sign. Now, the reason he's not projected for more is because the Cleveland Indians, at least over the last two years, have not struck out a whole lot. So, number one in the league, basically, under 19% strikeout rate is very strong. So, the strikeouts are hard to come by for a lot of pitchers. So, that's why you see those odds so down. Last three, or excuse me, last uh, two right-handed pitchers to face the in, the the Guardians. Wow, Soroka goes over four. That's all you need. Joe Ryan gets you seven. That's all you need is four. It's such a low line that you you could do you can do way worse playing something else because this is such a low line. Um, this guy is throwing five innings in his last two starts. That's 29 outs. That's five innings, four innings, four and two thirds. So in five innings, can he get you three strikeouts? It's a tough matchup. But again, a low line, good start to the year for him. Uh, there aren't a lot of strikeouts in this current lineup for him based off the current roster who's faced him. In fact, only three batters have faced him. The rest of these guys are going to see him for the first time in situations like that where you got a pitcher facing a team full of players they've never faced off before you tend to go with the pitcher they have the upper hand in that first game because they're seeing this shit for the first time so maybe this is a spot where you want to take advantage of that opportunity decent odds upsides there for sure all right hits allowed for tanner vibe bb all right, look, two games this season, six and five. So he's averaging five and a half hits allowed in back-to-back -back games. Minus 140 to the over on this one. This one's going to get bumped up. If you like it, go play it. He is projected for five hits allowed. That's all you need today, five hits. BVP versus Tanner Bybee. A few more bats in this lineup that have seen him. I mean, you got two, you got three guys in here with uh, with respectable averages. This one, 452, is not sustainable long term and just two plate appearances. But for what it is, it's he's seen the ball well versus Bybee. You got some hitters in this lineup, man, from one through five. You got some, you got some, uh, you got some talent in that top five. So if, if he gets, if he gets, um, in Trump, if he gets in trouble, th now the only thing that would, now the only thing that would keep this from happening is in the event that he gets, if he just gets absolutely wrecked where he gives up like four or five earned runs in the first few innings and he gets pulled. You know, does he get you five? Does he allow five hits? But outside of something weird like that, the upside's there. The odds are there. Caesars likes the over. Bet MGM and Pinnacle likes the over. You got three reputable books like the over on this when you're getting favorable projections for the over. And you got a lineup in, in Cleveland. Or excuse me. I'm sorry. I should be looking at the lineup in uh, Chicago. 
yeah, Cleveland does have a, a potent one through five. Um, not that potent lineup in Chicago. So maybe that's stopping you. Is this current lineup in Chicago enough to get after Bybee where he allows five hits before he gets pulled? He is going a little longer in his game. So he saw six innings in his last game. Only four innings here. If if he sees six innings today, that's basically uh, one hit per inning over his first five innings. I think that's possible. But again, favorable odds, favorable projections, and two back-to-back -back games. Look, he gave up six hits against Oakland. I wouldn't call Oakland murderer's row. I wouldn't call Oakland a potent offensive team right now. And that's what he gave to the Oakland Athletics. So I think there's a shot here. I think these are flex plays. I don't know if I put them in a power play, but I think a flex play is in play for those two. All right. I got a little mixed up there on my pitchers. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at the, the team for the same damn pitcher talking about the Indians, or the, the Guardians over there. We got it right, though. We fixed it. We fixed it. All right. So recap. It's possible. It's it's possible Booker goes over points and assists today. He could do them both. But in my opinion, he does one or the other. He's, he's either scoring a lot or he's dishing. Which one do you think he does? If you think he does both, take the over on his PA also because that's at, at a lower line. Durant scares me a little bit because he's just looking like an, a shell right now. But again, he's too good of a player to allow this to continue. At some point, that shit has to change. Fetty over strikeouts. Cleveland doesn't strike out a lot. The line is so low. He needs to average basically one strikeout per inning. It's like every other batter, every three batters. Dame and Shea, I like this over at 55. Another way you can look at this is each one needs to give you 27 points. Or excuse me, each one needs to give you 28 points. So those are, I mean, if you're telling, if, if, if Shea Gill just had a, a point prop every game at 28, you take the over on it every single game. Dame without... Giannis is in play. Gafford, we like the under on this one because the odds like the under on this one. Although his projections grayed out well and his game history against the Heat is actually very good. Bybee to allow four and a half hits versus the White Sox. We just talked about that one. We got it all straightened out. I think a positive here is he just gave up six hits to the A's. Anything's possible at that point. So let's screenshot him. Again, my only reservation out of all these plays is Durant's. I know the Suns can bounce back today. And if Kawhi Leonard plays today, then you absolutely expect more effort from the Suns today to keep this game from getting out of hand. They did, the Clippers did this yesterday with vintage Russ Westbrook going for a triple-double. You had Zubak putting in a double-double. I mean, you just had guys putting in work without Kawhi. Terrible, terrible game, terrible game for the Suns. All right. Yeah. Can't believe OKC is fighting for the top the top seed and the Suns aren't playing. Yeah. What about the the Kings fighting for the playing spot and they were top 2 seed last season. Um <laughs> what the fuck happened to our free $40 NBA protected play on Scampix? <laughs> Think that just went out to select uh select users. I didn't get I didn't get any notification on that. So I did not receive 
I did not receive that one. Let's look at Anthony Edwards over points. Let's look at Anthony Edwards with his name spelled correctly over points. Let's see if uh, Prize Picks wants to pull up Anthony Edwards over points. All right. So we just got through talking about Gafford under on PR. Tristan, uh, not Tristan, Jalen, you want to take a look at his fantasy. Now, Gafford, it is possible for Gafford to go under PRA, which is also in play. If you like his PR, I mean, that's only one higher. But because of his blocks and steals upside, Gafford's fantasy is in play. It's not on the board yet. Unless I'm missing it. Yeah, I don't see it on the board. It could be in play if it does get put on the board. Jalen says he uh, plays plays good against the Heat. He was abusing Bam when he was a wizard. In those game logs, it looks sure as hell looks like he was abusing he was abusing Bam for sure. Um, all right, let's look up Anthony Edwards real quick, and then we'll. Um, we didn't talk about Kevin Durant's assist. Four and a half is his line projected for five. Four point eight three is basically five. You round that up. Uh, all five books convincingly, convincingly like the under. This one might get bumped down to four because you're getting such heavy juice on it. He does have three games where he's gone over three out of his last five, four out of his last 10 matchup against the Clips. This season, he is 0 for 2 on this one. So 0 for 2 against the Clippers this season, averaging 2 over his last 10. Durant is 3 out of his last 5 and 4 out of his last 10. And then his odds down here, and you can see, uh, minus 146 on FanDuel, 140, 137, 150, 145. Those are really, really heavy numbers to the under. On Kevin Durant's assist. Yep, they are at four. Yeah, anytime you see juice like that, it's just a matter of time. So at four is much more playable at four on prize picks. Now, underdog. Underdog doesn't even have his assist up right now. Underdog doesn't even have his assist. Hot streak. Hot streak still has his assist at four and a half. So surprisingly, Prize Picks is offering you the lower line. Now, when we drop it down to four, that's four games over, one push. And still gone under in five. So I don't know what this does to the odds. I mean, I don't think this flips them. I don't think you see them just flip. I think you do see still heavy juice to the under, maybe like 120. Closer to 100, though. Prize picks is trying to get this back down to a 50 50 mark. So maybe you're seeing the odds. The odds will slightly favor the. I, I still think they're favoring the under on this one. I just don't think it's minus 137, minus 140. So I would definitely, it's, it's worth to take a shot at four than at four and a half because he needs four to push. Anthony Edwards points.
projected for 30 points today. Coming off a 50 point game. Coming off a 50 point game against the Wizards. That should have never happened. That game should never have been that close. They should never have been down. But this is what happens this late in the NBA season. Weird shit happens. Two games. Only two games over. Numbers against the, the Nuggets. Very good. Gone under in six. Over in six. So 50-50 on this one. But recent games. Much better. Yes. Playoff games for sure. But... I like that because you're getting the absolute best effort from the Nuggets. This isn't a meaningless in-season game. You're getting the Nuggets playing their best basketball, and Anthony Edwards is still able to go over these lines. So this game is a meaningful game. This is for the number one seed in the, in the West. They're tied right now from what I'm seeing. So if this game... Doesn't mean something to him. I, fuck, I don't know what game means something because they're trying to both fight for that top seed. So 26 and a half points for Edwards. You're not what you're not seeing in the game logs in the regular season, you are seeing it in the playoffs. Odds like the over on FanDuel, and that's it. You got three books that don't like the 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 over. So you have a decision to make here. You're not getting support from the books. You're not getting support from his 10 game logs. You are getting support from his projections and you are seeing positive games versus the Denver Nuggets playoffs and regular season. He did go for 30 against them this month or last month. I'm more willing to take a shot on this Durant assist prop at four than, it w than I was at four and a half. Damn. So Damien says Vassell and Sohan are out. That's what you think is going to happen? Or have you seen something about that? Brandon Clark is out. Finney's out. Merrill's doubtful. Yeah, nothing's changed too much on the injury report. Nothing. Yeah, Durant. That's a good way of putting that, Damian. He does look tired. He's old, man. He's like 29. Dude, 29 in NBA years is like 50. So that means LeBron James is like 75 years old in NBA years. If you factor in... AAU, high school, whatever bullshit they were going on when they were like pups. These guys have been playing basketball since they were like two years old. Luke has been playing professional basketball since he was like nine. That's why Ricky Rubio retired at like 31. Been playing professional in Spain for like his whole entire life. These guys get to be like 30 and they're just done. They're over basketball. They got all the money in the world. They can do whatever they want. I don't need that shit anymore. Are y'all making an all goblin slip for protected play? I didn't get the protected play, so no, I, I I'm not gonna make a goblin slip, but that's a good idea. PJ Washington rebound demon. Marcus Stroman over strikeouts. Gilbert over hits. Washington over rebound prop seven. Ten twenty seven. Appreciate y'all being here. Hit that like button on your way in. Or if you got a dip bounce, don't worry about it. Hit the like button on your way out. It means just as much. Gilbert over hits allowed. Was that the question?
Who asked that question? Curtis. What's up, Curtis? Good morning. Did they pull that from the prize fix board? Let's look at underdog. Let's look at underdog. So it is on underdog at a 0.9 payout. So they are nerfing it a little bit. That's their goblin, meaning that it's in a very good position to hit. So they're going to give you less money when it does hit. We can definitely take a look at his uh, hits allowed at five and a half. But for the time being, let's throw up his. Um, trying to find a discrepancy here. Let's throw up his strikeouts just to hold a spot. And then the other one was Stroman over. Stroman over strikeouts at five on prize picks and i'm assuming that on underdog it's four. Oh, it's five jr you got this at four you're playing it on a book dude miami needs to wake up um uh, i'm not even i'm not even targeting their bats until they start to show some life this series against the yankees has been abysmal they made fucking nestor cortez and carlos rodon look like petted and and Roger Clemens. Like, this is ridiculous. Shutouts. 13 strikeouts between those two dudes. Each of them go for six plus innings. Like, they could have stayed in there longer, I'm sure. I'm definitely not taking the under on his strikeouts just because Miami has shown they cannot put points on the board, at least in this series. But we want to take a look at his strikeout prop at four. We'll have to look at it at five. I'm sure on hot streak, you can play it at four because you can adjust the lines, but on underdog and price picks, you're not going to get it for lower. So on hot streak, it's at four and a half. If you can't find it at four, go and play it on, on hot streak at four and a half. That is your best next best spot. All right, let's take a look at Gilbert Stroman. Vu says they got the goblin stack for $20 free entry if your slip wins. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, okay. I gotcha, 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 gotcha. Jalen wants to take a look at KCP and Boncaro over fantasy. All right. I think this will be the last group of players that we look at today. 20 and forty two. Is anybody sitting for Orlando? If Giannis sits, that's um this one looks appealing. This one is appealing if Giannis sits. All right, let's take Durant out of there. Let's put Von Carroll in there. All right, so I tell you what. Let's look up the two baseball props first. We'll spend the extra a couple extra minutes breaking down the fantasy score since we have to do a little math on those. All right, so let's go over to props.cash. We'll go Gilbert. Um, Gilbert hits allowed. You can't play it on prize picks. And then we'll look at Stroman's strikeouts. Four on the books. Four and a half on hot street. Play it there before you play it on prize picks. If you currently do not play on other pick'em sites, you should consider playing on different pick'em sites. Price picks is fun. But don't put them on a pedestal. Don't put any of these pick'em sites on a pedestal on a pedestal. 
you will learn over time that there are so many lines out there so many different props offered if you're only accustomed to what prize picks offers that's you're in your bubble you gotta get out you gotta break that bubble and go play on different pick em sites if not if, if for anything else just play it just to see what's out there you know just create an account throw a few dollars on it just see what's out there you will start to realize that you have been playing really inflated lines on prize picks for quite some time if you can only play on prize picks then that's a little different but if you have the option to play on different pick em sites please do that all right logan gilbert five and a half hits allowed now to start the year off he's been pretty good about keeping those hits under five and a half but he's creeping up right four five how many today six four five six seven he is projected for 5.44 so that is right on the hook caesars likes the over bet mgm loves the over pinnacle loves the over as well so this is why you're not seeing it on prize picks because it's too good of a line too much juice on the over quite a few played appearances amongst this group of blue jays versus logan gilbert today Bachette, 5Ks outside of Bachette. Springer has four strikeouts. You're not seeing a whole lot of whiff from these dudes, which means they're putting the ball in play, which is the key to the game today. Put the ball in play. That's what we need these guys to do. Not walking very many guys to start the year. That's cool. Yeah, uh, this one's in play. We do we do have to look at last year a little bit, though, because two games is not a large sample size to, to, to go on. So we can look at three, three of his last... There's three last games on the road last year. It's a lot of last in there. Three consecutive games of seven or more hits allowed against the Reds, the Mets, and the Astros. And then these two games, five and five. So when you're just starting the mlb season or any season you do have to go back to last year as the year goes on you get more further into the season your sample size create themselves then you have you don't have to go back to last season but to get an idea of what he is able to do or not do you do have to go back on his game logs here so you can see his upside is is heavy in terms of hits allowed he is able to keep those hits down but like five five is is the magic number for him he's getting you five in five or more in eight out of these last 10 away games just games overall one two three four five six seven eight seven games yes that one's in play marcus stroman so we're gonna look at marcus stroman's strikeouts against the marlins now at four and a half on hot streak this is minus 154 to go over on on caesars pinnacle and bet mgm all have this at minus 154 or higher you're getting this on hot streak at four and a half they have not bumped this line up this is a good play on hot streak play it there before you play it anywhere else if you don't play on hot streak Start playing on hot streak. Take advantage of some of these lines. Marcus Stroman to start the year off has had two starts. He's gone four and six. He's hooked it and over. He played that Toronto. He pitched against that Toronto team. How many hits did he give up? Three. 
I'm only looking at that because that's the matchup for uh, Gilbert. Miami striking out a little bit, okay? 23% strikeout rate to start the year off. Look, back to back, six for Nestor, six for Rodon. Five for Gibson, that gets you the over. Seven for Lynn, that gets you the over. Five for Ch uh, Chase Silseth, gets you the over. 10 for Jared Jones, <laughs> gets you the over. It's a good spot. Play it at four and a half. That's your that's your best line on a pick'em side. It's four and a half. That's where you want to play it. All right, last handful of plays. We're gonna break down some fantasy scores before we get out of here. If I answered your question today, definitely hit that like button. If you didn't put a question in the chat, still hit the like button. But also, that's your fault. Who are we looking at? PJ rebounds, Pope, and Boncaro. So PJ rebounds. Let's see. Seven and a half demon rebounds for pajamas. All right. He hooked it here against Charlotte yesterday. Goes over, 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 hook. Well, no, not even a hook. Just over, under. So in order for him to get the over on this one, he needs eight rebounds. We need eight rebounds for pajamas. Bananas and pajamas. Look, against Miami this season, has he really played them this many times? Holy shit. Yeah, because he played them as a Hornet and then as a map. Okay. Okay. So in one, two, three, four, five games played against the Heat, he's gone over his demon line in two. Honestly, that's about as good as you're going to see for a demon prop. You're very rarely going to see positive odds and game logs for a demon. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on the board because prize picks would lose money. Or the demon line would be just higher. They would just inflate it. His projection today is seven. So, yeah, I mean, if you feel like eight's in his bag, I mean, you can play that. I don't really have a whole lot else to add to this one. You're not going to get odds on a demon prop because they're going to be ter terribly in favor of the of the under. But at five and a half, you know, you're probably going to start seeing it at six, six and a half on certain sites. If this got crept up to six and a half and his demon seven and a half, now it makes the demon a little bit more appealing because for just one more rebound, you can get a pay boost. So you got that situation to monitor. Over the course of the year. Over the course of the year, getting eight rebounds. He has a 21% hit rate. Again, you're never going to see positive odds on these. So if you're waiting on like a demon prop to give you good odds and good projections, you're just never going to see it. So what you're looking for is consistency versus that team. Any sort of trend you can you can identify. Oh, there's some upward, there's some you know ascension going on over the last five and seven games. Injury news, players sitting and stuff like that. But outside of that, you're always going to see more red than green for a demon prop. All right, KCP over 20 and a half fantasy points. So uh, a couple of ways we can do this is by going 
um, looking at the projections and doing some simple math. Now, the projections sometimes are, um, they're just going to vary. So I can tell you right now, right off the bat, just between his PRA, he's probably already at his fantasy score. So 3.13 times 1.2, that's 3.75. plus 3.75 plus 12.73 ta-da he's at his fantasy score just points rebounds and assists that's a little too easy right he's projected for 1.71 steals and blocks so 20 and a half twenty five point six minus 1.1 1 .1. so just on projections alone he's projected for 24 and a half fantasy points that was way easy, right? So let's take a look at his odds and see if we can create a range here. You're trying to create multiple data points that give you the most insight into the fantasy score. If you just go, oh, he's going to go over fantasy score because the projections say so. Okay, cool. We're sold. If it was that easy, you'd be a millionaire right now. I'll tell you that right now. So when we look at the odds, he's projected to go well under 10. So let's say he gets you 10 points exactly. Rebounds. Let's say he gets you two. So that's 2.4. 2.4, that's 12.4. Assist. Let's say he gets you two, that's three. That's 15.4 points. Now this is a big number, 166. So we're at 15.4 points. Was it 15.4? Or 12.4? 10, 12, 15.4, yep. So if we wanna be conservative here and say he gets you two steals and blocks, that's six points. That's 21.4. If you think he gets you another steal and block, because that's minus 166 to the over. That's 24.4 minus his turnovers. He's gonna get you three, he's gonna get you two turnovers. So if he gets you three steals and blocks based off these numbers, he's going over fantasy score. If he happens to get you just two steals and blocks, under. So now your range is 19.4 to 24.5 fantasy points. That's your range. I think his fantasy score falls in somewhere in that range. Your job is to figure out where it falls. But you got some ends here. So based off your research, where do you think it falls? Who is out for the Nuggets today? Gordon's day-to-day. -day. That's it? All right. No, well, possibly no Giannis in Milwaukee. Maybe create some upside for Boncaro. All right, let's figure this out. Let's say he gets you 24 points because those odds are pretty even. So let's say he gets you 24 points. That kicks it off. Let's say he gets you six rebounds and that's that's low. Okay, that's low. I know it's low, but let's go conservative here. So plus 7.2. That's 31.2. Let's say he gets you five assists. That's seven and a half. And then steals and blocks. One, maybe one. That's three points minus his turnovers. So zero. He's he's projected for th he's projected for four or more. But let's say he gets you three turnovers. So right now, with a conservative approach, he's projected for thirty eight point seven fantasy points. He needs over forty. He needs 
No, he needs 42. Excuse me. So he he's well under this. Now we did go conservative here. So that's your to me that's your minimum. 38.7 is your min. Let's go by projections. So 38.7 8.1. 41 fantasy score just on PRA. Let's factor in his steals and blocks. Minus turnovers. So you're looking at what, 30? Was it 37? 37 and 41.97. So even with the favorable projections, his fantasy score is getting there getting you 42 like right on the dot so in order for this to be a clear over he needs to turn the ball over two or fewer times he needs to get you at least 25 points or one extra assist or rebound so 37 to 42 is his range. That fantasy score is tight. That one got bumped up from 41 and a half. Now at 41 and a half, you're looking good. You're looking real good. So there's another example of how um, impactful those bumps can be, even by 0.5, especially with fantasy score, because you do get the turnovers deducted from your, from your uh, total. I think the turnovers are going to be key. If he can keep his turnovers to two or less, he goes over fantasy score. I think there's a strong likelihood he gets you the over with two or less turnovers. All right. Keep the turnovers down. He goes over. KCP is going to have to piece this shit together. He's not going for 15, 16 points. He's not grabbing you 10 rebounds. He's going to have to piece it together. In the competitive game, he needs to be on the court. No foul trouble. There's a couple different ways he can get the over on this one. Marcus Stroman over four and a half strikeouts is what you want. I'm not touching it at five, but at four and a half, you like the over on this one. Gilbert's only up here because we were looking at his hits allowed at five and a half, which is playable on underdog. So you take that over. PJ Washington Demons, this is a risky one. You throw this in a flex and use it for a payout boost. If you ran these three guys as is, you go from a 5X on your three pick to a 4.5X flex. That is a good payout. If you went power on this one, you go from a 5X to 8.5. It's a pretty good payout. So that's how you would use that, demons, that demon prop to boost your payout. Not bad. All right. If Booker's not scoring, assist. Yeah, we looked at, we already looked at that. If he's not scoring and he's assisting, out of his last 10 games, he's only gotten you over points and assist in three of those games. He's gotten you assist over assist or over points in more games than he's gotten you over on both of them. It is kind of tricky too, because we're talking about KD over points and rebounds. We're talking about Booker over points. You're asking a lot from these guys to go over their props in the same game at the same time. So I don't know if you want to throw all of them in a slip together, unless you're doing a game stack and you're hoping for like an overtime or just a game that comes down to the last second bucket. 
but it's a lot of production to ask from a team um, in the same slip. Drove, what's going on? Good morning. Oh, you like Gilbert strikeouts? Tristan says Jimmy's been going over his point prop recently. Um, to, uh, before last game, I think this looked a lot better because I want to say his points were at 21 and a half at some point. Is this, is this the start of, of, of playoff Jimmy? Right now, the Heat sit in the eighth seed at 43 and 35. So they are uh, they are out of the play-in tournament, but they do play the winner of the play-in tournament if they stay in the A seed. They have an opportunity to jump the Sixers with the if they win today. They're tied with the 76ers for the seventh seed. And then from there, they're only a game behind the Pacers. I mean, between the eighth seed and the sixth seed, you're only separated by one and a half games. They got to win out and they got to hope for some losses, but I don't think they need, I don't think they go into this game and, and flop. So if playoff Jimmy is here, then 22 points is too low. 22 and a half points is too low. Twenty three. It got bumped to twenty three. Head to head against Dallas. Just one game this year, 14 points. Jimmy at home. Last 10 home games, Jimmy at home has averaged 19 and a half, 15 over his last five home games. Yeah, there's a big difference between regular season Jimmy and uh, playoff Jimmy. So if you feel this is playoff Jimmy, it's this is the start of it. 22 point. Well, shit, it got bumped to 23. All the books have it at 22. That's so weird that BetMGM has it under at 21 and a half. But PointsBet has it over at 22 and a half. Caesars, DraftKings, and FanDuel all like the over at 22 and a half. So BetMGM hates it at 22 and a half. He is projected for 22 and a half. So he's projected for right at the hook. But at 23, he needs 24 points now. 23 and a half over on hot streak. So prize picks surprisingly is offering you the lower line. And then on underdog. Played on underdog 22 and a half points. Play it on. If, wait, if you can find it on a book at 21 and a half, that's where you play it. Underdog is your first pick em site. Then Price picks at 23. Don't touch it at 23 and a half. I don't understand why you would play it at 23 and a half. If you have the option to play it lower, just play it lower. 22 and a half on sleeper. So underdog, sleeper, then price picks. Those are your three stuff. Those are your three places to play Jimmy Butler. Uh 
That's it. Tristan says his line was 19 and a half or 20 on underdog. Dude, if you got Jimmy Butler's points at 19 and a half, you locked in some pretty good value. It's at 23 in some places, so. It's pretty strong. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think. I think that is going to do it for today. Um, let's see here. I mentioned uh, we had a pretty uh, we had a pretty good day in the Discord yesterday. I'll show you a few slips that that hit from everybody. There's Encore. That's Ruben. He plays on Hard Rock, so he does a lot of money lines and um, over under. You know, first five innings, things of that nature. Cleaning up, just bankroll builders over here. Damien, I mentioned Damien had a really good game, really good day in the Discord. I mean, not every slip is a 25x, a 10x. But there's a 25x right there from Damien. Just nice hits. Just if you're not, if you're not cashing out, then you're building bankroll. Right? You gotta be doing one or the other. You can't be just fucking losing all the time. But just because you don't hit a 25x doesn't mean you lost. Here's a slip that I play that DeMar DeRozan personally set out to destroy on his own. Uh, Grayson Allen, in hindsight, I would have stayed away from the Suns, figured it'd be a better game, but I was really high on this one. Everything else worked out in my favor. Taking the under on Jokic, taking the under on Gary Trent, Got a taco that worked out yesterday. Took the under on Jabari Walker. That worked out. CJ McCollum. I am kicking myself a little bit for this one just because even though the odds and projections favor the under, the game history against Portland for him was good. And I just thought that they would destroy the, the, the Portland Trailblazers and he wouldn't need to go over this. So, in fact, that wasn't the case. They were down by 10 at one point and he did have to play more. So, Herb Jones stays under. Murphy goes over. Russell Westbrook goes over boards. Curry Taco. Here's another one. DeAndre Ayton. You see my game logic here? Portland's going to get beat up. They're not going to be in this fight. New Orleans is going to handle business. Aiton goes under. Walker goes under. Didn't work out. So once one play away from going 25x, one play away from going 25x. Very, very close yesterday. So Discord is, um, is profiting. Just every day is not going to be... Um, a $500, $600 day. Those days will happen. Yesterday was a $40, $50, $60 day, which is great bankroll builder. It's a great way to continue playing without having to deposit. Maybe that's your goal. Maybe your goal isn't to add commas to your account. Maybe your whole goal is to not have to deposit every other week. That's a good goal. At some point, you start playing with house money and prize picks money instead of your own. That's a good goal, too. Check it out in the Discord, though. We share this stuff every single day, freemium and premium. We share a lot of stuff in the Discord. Link is in the stream description, so let me know uh, if you have any questions about that. But that's going to do it for today. We are two hours in the books. If you lasted this long, consider subbing up to the channel. It means a ton. Definitely hit the like button on your way out. Share my channel with somebody you know. Make sure the notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out on the next live stream, which will be Friday, 9 a.m. And then again on Saturday at 9 a.m. We take Mondays, Thursdays, and Sundays off. 
here on the channel, but I'm always active in the Discord, sharing plays, sharing slips and insights. So ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate y'all sticking around and being here for this stream. As I always say, I hope all of your player props respect the damn coin. I wish you all the best of luck. And until Friday's live stream, Chavez is out. Thank you.